Hi students, welcome to Year 11 Biology and Module 4, Ecosystem Dynamics. This is video number 4, Population Dynamics. In this video, we're going to be investigating and determining the relationships between biotic and abiotic factors in an ecosystem, including predicting consequences for populations in ecosystems due to predation, competition, symbiosis and disease. That's an awful lot to try and get through, so let's see how we go. When trying to assess your level of understanding, it's always useful to have a couple of markers for your success. At a minimum, it would be good if you can predict the effect of a change in a biotic factor, such as predation, on a population. So you can do this simply using a food chain or a food web. And by identifying a change in one species, you can look at how that affects other species. At the next level, we should be able to explain the effect of the change in the biotic factor on that population. So again, using the example of a food web, if we make changes, and they don't have to be just by wiping one species out, but by adding something which may have an impact on one species, and then we try and examine how that ripples out through all of the other species in the ecosystem, then that gives you an idea of what you're looking for here. And ultimately what we want to do is to be able to make predictions about the effects of any uh, biotic interactions on particular populations. So we start to get a sense of the complexity of relationships that occur in ecosystems and how ecology is not an easy uh, branch of biology for us to start to analyze exactly what's going on in any ecosystem. So what we need to do first of all is we need to just be really clear about our definition of populations. And a population consists of all the individuals of a species within a given area. What's really important about this is the gene pool. The gene pool is all of the genes that are available to that population. Now that doesn't mean they're all possessed by each individual, but it does mean that the, total, the totality of all of the genes, of all the potential expressions of those genes, are all available within that population. And that means that any changes that can occur, any shifts that can occur either at a micro or macro evolutionary scale, are going to happen because of that availability of genes. And obviously, if populations start to shrink, then the availability or the diversity, if you like, within that gene pool um, starts to diminish. And that does put pressure on the species as a whole. The number of individuals of a species per unit area or volume is its population density. And we will look at population density in a little bit more detail as we go along because population density is often tied to the size of different individuals as well. Dense populations often exert strong influences on populations of other species. And this is the biotic interaction. And as I mentioned at the beginning of this video, there are a number of very important biotic interactions that we do need to look at and analyze in terms of how those biotic inter interactions affect the individual species and how they may ripple out throughout the ecosystem. When we start to plot population densities, then we need to recognize a couple of things. First of all, they're in a constant state of flux. They change all the time. We've said before that you increase your population through births and immigration, and you decrease your population through deaths and immigration. So, so individuals come into your area, or they're born, or individuals leave your area, or they die. And that's how populations shift. And often there's a number of factors that affect that. One of the most obvious would be breeding cycles. So obviously breeding cycles are going to correspond with the times when the numbers uh, start to peak, or at least to rise very quickly. The um, alternative, or on the other side of that, would be if the population of a predator's numbers started to increase, perhaps during their breeding season, and with all those extra mouths, extra food is required, and so that can have a decreasing effect as more uh, individuals may be killed through predation. When we look at plotting um, the density of different populations against body size, we notice that the numbers are so much higher for smaller bodied organisms than for larger bodied. 
The graph on this particular slide actually shows uh, mammal species, so smaller mammals typically achieve greater population densities than larger mammals do, and that kind of makes sense if you think about it, because one of the problems is that uh, mammals have got to keep eating, so even if you're a small animal, you're going to still need to keep eating, you're going to need a reasonable food supply in order for you to survive. But if you're a large animal, then you may be able to eat larger foods, but you still have to keep eating. So there needs to be very large populations, particularly at lower trophic levels on the food chain, in order to support um, higher populations. Now, what's important that we consider here is this important ecological term called biomass. So it may well be that we could talk not necessarily about uh, mammals, although we could, uh, but we could be talking about insects, very small organisms, and they may be living off a tree. And when we're looking at numbers, we might say we've got one tree supporting hundreds of aphids. But when we look at the biomass, when we actually weigh all of the individuals at each trophic level, we do find a decrease as we go up the trophic levels. So as we increase the trophic level, we decrease biomass. It's simply not possible for a large mass of organisms at a high level, of, at a predatory level, to be a population um, of prey. They'll just run out of food too quickly. So this is one of the things that we're, in, we're looking for and we're thinking about in terms of the biotic interactions and how changes in these interactions, like predation, can affect population numbers. We also need to be aware of the fact that the size of the organism also has some effect on population numbers, even if it's simply about the amount of food that they need, the amount of space that they take up, and the types of habitats that they need to occupy. So here's a little checklist for you of some of the factors that affect population changes. And these include things like seasonal variations, um, temperature, rainfall, day length, daily fluctuations, uh, particularly those in the littoral zones. And we saw some of these quite recently on a um, rock platform field trip. Uh, temperature fluctuations for cold-blooded animals, that's very important and it's one of the reasons why um, animals who aren't able to regulate their own body temperature and need the external environment to do that are more or less active at different times of the year and also at different times of the day. The availability of food we mentioned uh, on the previous slide. Availability of shelters is also important, particularly for larger organisms as opposed to smaller ones. And mating cycles are another thing that affects population changes, especially as we talked about around breeding cycles and how often they are and the fact that we find often um, cycles of population changes where those peaks correspond to the, the breeding cycles. So the four biotic interactions that we have to have a look at in terms of trying to predict changes in populations, and a prediction's a prediction, it's not about being right, it's about justifying the prediction that you make. It's about saying, I think the numbers are going to increase or stabilise or decrease. So there are, there are options, there are always are options. They're either going to increase, uh, there'll be no change, or they'll decrease. So one of those is always going to be right, and sometimes all of them may be right because they're just predictions. What's important is the reason. Why do you think they're going to change? What is it about these factors that you think um, is going to create an increase or a decrease in population density? Now, obviously, if we increase uh, predator populations, that's going to place more pressure on the prey, and we could expect a drop in prey numbers and the reverse if the predator numbers start to drop. If new predators are introduced into a new area, such as an introduced species, or perhaps even new prey, this can also affect the existing predators and prey in different kinds of ways. In the last video, when we looked at ecological niches, we talked about competitive exclusion. Now, competition doesn't always imply exclusion. Sometimes competition can occur for shelter, for food, for mates, and the competition may not be a battle to the death, it may simply be a battle for um, some temporary dominance. And so 
different individuals and different species can even exist in the same area competing for similar sorts of, res of resources without necessarily competing each other, one or the other, through to extinction. But competition is obviously going to affect population numbers and population density, and depending on the type of competition that it is, particularly if it's competition for similar prey species, that can have an impact on the population of predators. Symbiosis is another very important biotic interaction that we see happening in ecosystems. Symbiosis is the reliance on another individual or population. And usually what we're talking about here are things like commensalism, commensalism or mutualism. So where there is a benefit to both organisms involved in a relationship, or at least one of them, without the other one being harmed in any way. And so if those relationships change, or if new relationships form, they can also have an impact on the population density. And finally, disease. And I'm making this in the time of COVID, where we've certainly experienced disease uh, in many different ways around the world. And one of the consequences uh, of this disease has also been death, increased death rates. And this often happens especially for indigenous populations when an introduced species or an introduced population um, arrives. And this doesn't have to be humans, but it certainly can be. Um, it can also be different organisms that in a new environment can bring diseases with them, which if in the indigenous population there are um, particular individuals or species that have not experienced a particular disease in the past, they can be very, uh, they can be very susceptible and, and, and their numbers can be devastated often quite quickly. So disease is a real problem, particularly new diseases, and we've experienced that firsthand with COVID. We've realised that when we don't have uh, a way of treating or a way of dealing with something, then the consequences can be quite devastating for at least a period of time until we catch up. So each of these important biotic interactions, predation, competition, symbiosis and disease, can all create different scenarios where we need to predict what's going to happen to individual populations as a result of a change in one or, or many of these factors. And we'll give you an opportunity to have a look at some examples during class. Thanks for watching.